This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play. Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans. Where? Everywhere. It is Monday, June 6th. I am Jerem Jordan. Spencer Linton had an... Uh, later tea time than normal, so I'm teamed up with a man who was denied the employee discount at BYU-Idaho over the weekend, Jason Shepard. Okay, so look, I, I'm not, clearly was not 100% sure how the dynamics of BYU versus BYU-Idaho worked. Do you also expect to get the Des News <laughs> and uh, no. you go to I, Deseret Book and you're like, I really need this book so, at a discount. I work for BYU. Look, I, I just, I assumed it's all part of the same family. I realize that it's it's different because it's BYU-Idaho. You're versus, in La trying to snag a shirt and you're like, hey, uh, you your boy. Okay, so so the Shepard family, we've been trying to do like day trips and like smaller things. So okay. we, we took a day trip to Rexburg. My wife went to Rick's. So, so she. Did my, so did my parents. Yeah. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Uh, <laughs> so we ended up going up there because we hadn't been up there in a long, long time. She went to Rick, like she Rick's. Went, the last she went couple to years actually when it was yeah. called Rick's. Yep, she yep, went yep. there, so she wanted to go see it. The spirit it's, of Rick's is still It's alive. a it's a short drive, is you know, three, three and a half hours. hours. Okay. It's it's doable for yeah. a day trip. So we go up there. We go into the to the store, the the equivalent of the BYU store up at BYU Fish Idaho. Outfitter, BYU fans ever. My wife wants to purchase a couple of Ricks, like retro Ricks yeah. T-shirts. I have a Rick shirt I love wearing. It's fun. And yeah. I wasn't sure, but when we get up to pay, I'm like, uh, "Does my BYU discount work up here?" And she's you like, may, "She looks hi, at me." You she, may recognize. No, me I, did from the BYU that. I did not say that. I did not say that. Jason Shepard here. She she I, she just like <laughs> no, it doesn't. Like I, like she was not rude, but it was like no. Tell Rick I am unhappy. <laughs> so, so I very politely said, "Okay, just thought I would ask." But I was like, "Okay, I'm I'll like go- at least I know now." You're like, "I pay tithing. Is there any discount for this?" <laughs> so, I Both did not ties. know what the 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 yeah. symbiotic relationship between did- the two. If the discount went from from me, here to yes. there as well. Let me ask you: Were you a coupon guy growing up? What do you mean growing up? I'm still a coupon guy. <laughs> You're still a coupon guy? Like for restaurants, if we go out to eat. Okay. They got that $5 are you like, off or are you $25 like or more. Are cutting them out of something that showed up in your mailbox? Uh, Yeah, or I rip it. Oh, your manual rip guy. Sometimes. Manual coupon. If I, if ma- it, if it need to get there quick and I don't okay. have time to go grab the scissors, yeah. then I'll just rip it. Jason Shepard, manual rip guy, <laughs> is on BYU Sports Nation. Love Did it. you know that if you had gone up to BYU-Idaho, that your employee discount, like at the BYU store, would not work up there? Did you know that? I would just not go up to BYU-Idaho. <laughs> okay. Here's your show lineup. Big 12 spring meetings are in the books. Revenue, BYU TV, AAC entrance discussion, lots to talk about. We'll discuss that with a reporter from the Tulsa World newspaper. Shaley Gonzalez enters the transfer portal. If you didn't know, this is shocking news. We'll discuss it. And uh, South Point releases five BYU football lines, make it six. One of those is just crazy. And the women's soccer and women's volleyball schedules are out. What are the good games? I can't wait for this fall. They've lined up some really nice games. Yes, they games have. And some at home, which is awesome. But first, here are today's headlines. The Big 12 Conference wrapped up its spring meetings on Friday in Irving, Texas, just in suburban Dallas. BYU and the three other future members were in attendance. Noteworthy items to come out of the meetings was the hope that a new commissioner could be named at the Big 12 Football Media Days, which will be held July 19th. Also, current commissioner Bob Bowlesby said that BYU will be expected to fill 50 games or so on the conference's streaming platform. That's ESPN Plus's Big 12 Now. BYU TV did uh, 128 games, plus men's vo- including men's volleyball. So hmm. we'll see what uh, Fun to see how this all works out. That means for no uh, Women's basketball superstar Shayla Gonzalez enters the transfer portal. She averaged 18 points, six rebounds, and four assists last season. She has two years of eligibility. More on Gonzalez leaving in what's trending. Women's basketball assistant Lee Kamard has been named associate head coach by new head coach Amber Whiting. Kamard has spent the past three seasons on the women's coaching staff after being part of the men's coaching staff for a season. As a player, Lee told me he's always wanted to start a lawn care service called Leezy's Lawn Care Service. So I didn't know if that was going to start now. Just going to get a jump start on that. Well, it looks like he's saying he can uh, wait on that. 
Uh, women's soccer schedules out. Ten non-conference games, nine WCC games, of course, ten home games. Cougars play an exhibition game at North Carolina on August 23rd. That's awesome. Other notable games include at Ohio State. Uh, and then home games with Alabama, Colorado, Utah, Santa Clara, notably, which will be a ton of fun at Southfield this fall. Hey, we want Bama, and we're getting We it. want the That's actual right. Bama, not UAB. <laughs> yes. Women's volleyball also released their schedule as they look to make their 10th Sweet 16 appearance in 11 seasons. BYU faces a very challenging non-conference schedule, as they typically do, facing five teams that finished in the top 25 last season. The season will begin August 26th through the 27th in the BYU Invitational, which will feature Duke, Ryder, and Washington State. Pitt made the Final Four. They're coming to Provo. That's a return game. That was BYU's only regular season loss, by the way. Let's go. That's going to be off Georgia Tech, Elite Eight. That's going to be awesome. Elijah Bryant had a double-double, 13 points, 10 boards for Anadolis Ephes in Turkey to advance to the league final. Game one is tomorrow. The summer baseball season is underway, and a couple of Cougars did work over the weekend with the St. Cloud Rocks of the Northwoods League. Josh Cowden hit two home runs in the same inning, including a grand slam and a victory against the Lacrosse Loggers. And Jansen Kiesel, how about this, struck out 10 in five no-hit innings. Lacrosse Loggers, very on brand. That, of course, would be Wisconsin, I believe. By the way, this is not the first time Jansen Kiesel has struck out 10. He did that in his debut as a BYU Cougar in Florida. Kenley Jansen Kiesel, I like it. <laughs> and Paul Asike had a try assist in a 33-5 Utah Warriors win over the Dallas Jackals in Major League Rugby. It's the second largest margin of victory in team history. to close out the season. All rise and chow. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. So as we mentioned, some news out of the Big 12 spring meetings. 42.6 mil was given to each school in revenue last year. That's not just the football TV contract. That includes the basketball show units and other rights fees. A projected 50 mil in 2025. <laughs> BYU TV's role was clarified a little. There will be a commissioner named, hopefully, by Media Day in July. So, Shep, what was the most interesting news that came out of the Big 12 spring meetings to you? Okay, so there, there are two things. One is, is more newsworthy than the other. I'll start with the one that's less newsworthy, but really hit me when I was reading about it, saw some of the, the clips from some of the interviews, and it was how well-received BYU was. And we heard a lot from Bob Bowlesby, not just things that were positive about the Cougars, because we know that, that he said very positive things on this very set, he said it. But he went above and beyond some of his comments on how excited they are to have BYU and what BYU brings to the conference. He talked about BYU's national brand. And outside of Notre Dame, they're the biggest brand that, worldwide and how exciting that is. I felt warm inside when you said that. Uh, well, we should. We absolutely should. Number one, because it's true. And number two, because it's fun to hear other people say that. When it doesn't come from us and people on the outside say it, it almost the Crimsonites did not like that one. <laughs> yeah, well, they could not like it, but it's true. <laughs> so that that is one of the things okay. that stood out to me was just how positive yep. the view of BYU was, certainly from Commissioner Bowlesby. The other thing, and maybe this is somewhat selfish, but the, the biggest news that I took from it was BYU TV and the the package. It, you know, we, we referenced some the, clarification yeah, there. We had not heard because before, obviously yeah. this affects us. This is what we do. How and many games, what are we doing? Is yeah. Well, and look, and, yep. and this is going to evolve as this thing goes. It, more and more conversations happen, and once BYU gets into the league, I'm sure it will continue to evolve because it's a feeling out process on both sides. And you don't want to be the Longhorn Network if you're BYU and coming in, yes, which we are not. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And let's be honest, channel. that's what yeah. the Big 12's um, situation has been. And their example of stuff like that has been the Longhorn Network, which has not been inclusive to the rest of the conference. That is the opposite of what BYU TV Starts with the name. Yeah, is trying to do. So hearing Bob Bowlesby say that 50 games is kind of what all the other schools agree to, that, that, yeah. They, yeah, yeah. that they give the conference and its streaming platform, which is ESPN Plus and the Big 12 now brand, yeah. that they give them 50 games or so to be part of that package. Hey, that was interesting to me as an me. employee of BYU TV.
Yeah, that that works for me. The first one uh, that stuck out to me was the fifty mil in revenue. <laughs> you know, you, you don't, don't need get no some coupons, that, right? Shep. You don't need no coupons when you got when you got half a hundy. Okay, uh, that is just going to be a massive number for BYU to be able to finally compete with the big boys financially. Now we can start to see some of these facilities. Listen, BYU has been upgrading facilities. BYU bought a freaking mountain. Why mountain in Provo High? Like, the money's there. It's just going to be there in more abundance. And BYU operates in the black. They've always been super sound financially. Yes. You raise the money for the Marriott Center Annex and the money to power it in perpetuity before you even build it, which is awesome. So the 50 mil is awesome. And then the other 50, of course, those games. So let's talk through that. Men's volleyball is not in the Big 12. The other eight sports we broadcast all in the Big 12. Um, this means that, you know, there's something like 60-ish games that perhaps BYU TV will still be able to do. We're not sure exactly all the details, but that's exciting. Um, by the way, regarding Bob Bowlesby, when we say Bob now, that means Bob Bowlesby. He is a Brazilian soccer player. He is a first-name guy on this show What did we mean prior to when we said Bob? What about Bob, maybe? Uh, The movie? I don't know. But now when we just say Bob, it's Bob Bolzer. So, yeah, interesting stuff. I thought perhaps we'd get some answers relative to are the AAC teams coming in? Are we going to have divisions? If not, will we have pods? What does that look like? Not quite, because without knowing when the three AAC teams are entering the Big 12, You can't make a schedule. So that's going to come out in four months, and they've got to know sooner than later to make said schedule. And without divisions, oh, by the way, um, they don't have one now, uh, and they won't in the future, it feels like. So, yeah, interesting stuff, fun stuff. And now we mark every June as an interesting time for the spring meetings and football media day, which won't be all BYU TV stuff starting next year. It will be this year. Uh, but it's certainly a, a new era, which is very exciting. No coupons required in the Big 12. <laughs> well, and look, and we mentioned this in headlines, the, the Big 12 Football Media Day is July 19th. We may have some of the answers to those by then. By then. That, that may be an opportunity for some of these questions to, to have official announcements made about them. Yes. So, you know what, we five, six weeks away from that. That's exciting. So, I mean, that's one of those big dates to kind of look towards uh, to maybe have some of these answers. All right, topic two. We mentioned this earlier as well. Shaley Gonzalez announcing on social media that she has entered the transfer portal. Gonzalez is a two-time West Coast Conference Player of the Year, the reigning Player of the Year right now, and the team's best player and one of the greatest to ever play at BYU. What was your initial reaction when Shaley Gonzalez made the announcement she was entering the portal? Pretty surprised. I uh, was hoping Shaley would be here, uh, you know, the four or five years. She had, she had told us, uh, you know, at least on the Deep Blue podcast that I did with her a couple months ago, that she was planning on being here five years. Things changed. That thing was the coaching change. That thing was the coaching change. Uh, Jeff Judkins out and uh, Amanda Whiting in. And uh, that obviously that didn't, uh, didn't jive with her in some way. Uh, full disclosure, Shaylee's mom uh, was uh, apparently a candidate for the job as well. Didn't get it, so I can see why there's uh, perhaps some strong feelings about that decision, right? Um, and and it's a bummer because Shaylee's one of the best players that BYU's ever had. And uh, a, a note on this. We love when these new awesome transfers come in. There's not a ton that really leave BYU, right? And she's the most impactful transfer to leave since who? Matt Carlino? She's way better than Matt was on those teams, and I love Matt. I'm not trying to offend Matt. I, this, this is She's one of the biggest transfers to ever leave uh, BYU, maybe the biggest. So it's uh, uh, Amber, excuse me. Thank you. Um, Whiting. It, this is big news. This is big news, and it, at the end of the day, you can't, you can't get and never get. Right, yeah. And the transfer portal uh, giveth, the transfer portal taketh away. And if you love Puka Nakua and Samson Nakua, you got to lose some guys sometimes, too. You can't keep everybody. Not everybody's happy. And obviously, she did not like uh, the coaching change, and that's that. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if other players leave. Like, Lauren Gustin has a big decision to make as to whether she's going to stay as well. Hopefully, she does. Um, She's been in a couple schools, so she's familiar with sort of going somewhere and thriving. Um, So we'll see. Hopefully, she stays. And and we'll see. If you guys got a talented team coming back, but without Shaley, it's certainly a different kind of standard. You, uh, that first year isn't, hey, we have Lauren and Shaley, and it's the NCAA tournament. That's the expectation. So we'll see where she goes, what happens. Is there a chance she still comes back? That, that's the hope. That's the hope, It certainly, certainly seemed like in her post that she was gone, though. 
Well, look, my initial reaction was it was, I, I was bummed out. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're talking about the best player on the team currently yep. and somebody that year in and year out you count on to be said best player, not just on the team, but as we mentioned a second ago, in the conference. She's phenomenal. So it was a bummer that she made the decision. You knew it was a possibility only because any time there is a coaching change, these types of things can happen. Whether they do or don't, it doesn't always fall one way or the other, but you know it's at least a possibility anytime, and it's in any sport. Anytime there's somebody that it now takes over a program of any sport, people that didn't commit to that coach, they always think about things, but, but you, you, know, you hope that, that she was going to stay because of what she means to this team. You know, at the end of the day, you wish her nothing but success, but it's sad to see her leave because of what she meant to this team. And like you said, this team looks very different because it's not just Shaley not being on here, and who knows if there's others that, that will follow, but you already had players like Maria Albiero from last year and Paisley Harding that are not here. So Tegan the, Graham, yep. Yeah, Tegan Sarah Graham. Hampson. You lost Sarah Hampson. big names. So, yeah. so it's this team is going to look even more different than what we had originally thought. So my, my initial reaction, I was bummed because you don't want to see a player of that caliber leave. A Shea, uh, player like Shaley doesn't walk through the door very often. So um, it, it's certainly uh, big news, uh, which brings us to our question of the day. What was the biggest BYU news that came out over the weekend? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Holy sports! On Twitter. Shayla Gonzalez entering the transfer portal. Huge blow for the team to lose their best player with a brand new head coach, especially since Shaley would have been a key piece, probably the main piece entering Big 12. Absolutely. Play. You, we now know that that, that tie with Juddy was uh, as strong or stronger than maybe we thought. And um, perhaps if, you know, if, if BYU brings in a coach with, uh, you know, that, that Shaley, I, I don't know what the situation is with Amber Whiting. Um, but obviously it was uh, something that Shaley wanted to bounce with, her decision. Shaley, by the way, has been here four years. She had a redshirt year. She's played three. She has two more because one of COVID. with COVID. Right. So it's not like she's uh, you know, a sophomore and played two years. and she's, uh, she's been here four years. She's probably close to, if not already graduated. And so there's that situation. And again, the transfer portal giveth and taketh away. I don't want to see Shaley go, but I understand how it works with life you you have to to get you have to give and unfortunately this is a sacrifice on the transfer portal altar if you will and it's Shaley best of luck to her wherever she goes all right coming up we have a nomination for the next member of the BYU Hall of Fame and guess what he never even went to BYU is it you and we check in with <laughs> Garen Emig of the Tulsa World on what went down at the Big 12 spring meetings divisions uh, revenue competition what is it this is BYU Sports Day This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. This is your guys' song. 
You deserve our goal. 50,000 books in the hands of children. Okay, and I can help. Why do you do this? What do you get out of this? It needs hope, and you need to show that little bit of love. When you lay down your head. People come here one way, and they change while they're here. It was so great to be a part of it. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Sports Nation has its own YouTube channel. Get all the interviews by subscribing to and sharing the BYU Sports Nation YouTube channel. Smash that subscribe button, as the kids say. We're live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. Jerem Jordan alongside Jason Shepard. We now welcome to the program a man who has more insight on the Big 12 spring meetings, as we have discussed throughout the program. His name is Garen Emig, columnist for the Tulsa World newspaper. Garen, welcome to the program. Good to be here. How are you guys? We're good. And uh, we hear BYU and Big 12, and that brings a massive smile to our face. It really <laughs> does, especially Shep. So uh, what, what were the conversations and news that kind of stood out from the spring meetings to you? Oh, it was uh, a lot of it was surface level, to be honest. The distribution was the uh, the big topic on day three on Friday, upwards of uh, forty two point six million per school. That's good news. It could be better. Uh, it's going to need to be better as the conference tries to keep up with the SEC and the uh, the Big Ten moving forward. That's something I wrote in the column that day. Um, a lot of speculation about other items, including uh, scheduling models and how that's going to look, especially with the changing memberships in the next three years, uh, new commissioner to replace Bob Bullsby. That's a topic. And then uh, there's obviously the uh, the awkwardness, and that was the word that was tossed around a lot down in Irving all week, the awkwardness of, of again, having uh, four newcomers in and representatives from all those four schools in, in the, uh, the meetings, and then Oklahoma and Texas moving out. And uh, still some really uh, nebulous timelines, especially with regard to the Sooners and the Longhorns. And so this is a it's a strange time for the league, but um, I think I think everyone's in better shape than they were 10 months ago when the Sooners and the Longhorns just threw everyone uh, for a loop and and uh, and news dropped that they, they had intentions on leaving. You know, Garen, I, I want to hit on both of those last two things that you mentioned in terms of the new members and then the awkwardness with the outgoing members. Let, let's start with BYU and the other three that are coming in. Overall, how were they received in these meetings? Warmly. Uh, probably cautiously, um, without being inside the boardrooms, it's hard for me to say, but you, but the comments from Bullsby and uh, Lawrence Savonic, the Texas Tech president, who's also the Big 12 board chair on Friday, indicated that, that it was it was not just, it wasn't just cursory, right? Representatives from BYU, Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston weren't just invited to sit and watch. Uh, they, they said a few things, um, they offered a few opinions, um, I, I, um, obviously the members outside of Oklahoma and Texas are going to want to get to know these, these folks, the, the they're going to have just as big a vote in matters moving forward as the, the eight holdovers who, who have more, more of a vested interest in the conversations of the conference and business as usual. And so, uh, but, but there, but, but it isn't, again, you know, it, it is, a, it is an interesting time and, uh, these, these will be, I think, easier meetings to pull off not just when all four newcomers are officially in, but when Oklahoma and Texas are officially out. There's just no getting around that. So are, are the Sooners and Longhorns engaged in what's going on, or are they just there so they don't get fined? <laughs> <laughs> Again, probably depends on who you ask, but no, I, I think that, I mean, they're voting members still, right? I mean, it's, they... They're, the, anything that was decided or, or talked about in Irving last week uh, played straight into Austin and Norman. I mean, it's, they, they, they don't, this wasn't just, again, a symbolic effort on behalf of Joe Castiglione and Cristo Conte, the two athletic directors, to show up and just to, to be running out the clock. I mean, you could, that's a term that a lot of folks are using, and I don't blame them for going there. But, for instance, if, in fact, if OU and Texas are serious about staying through the grant of rights in the summer of 25, well, that's... You know, that's three more years of Big 12 of, of competition, right? And specifically Big 12 football. And that's also a crossover with BYU, UCF, Houston, and Cincinnati. So they, they're they going to want to, I mean, they're still playing for the same national championships and, and revenue streams as everyone else. And if you're trying to discuss, uh, you know, a scheduling model with uh, 
with the 14 team league you, and, and two of those teams uh, are, are still involved they're going to want to say and uh they may feel a little stranger speaking up and, and being assertive there i imagine a lot of folks are, are rolling their eyes figuratively, figuratively if not literally at, at castiglione and del conte down there but i mean it's it, it, this this goes to what the sooners and longhorns are about until they move to the sec so no it's not symbolic it's uh they were there and and fully participatory Garen Emig, columnist from the Tulsa World, is on BYU Sports Nation. It seems so awkward, like you said, because they're outgoing in the next couple of years. They could leave earlier. They haven't declared that, so they're in for a couple more seasons. The four newbies are in the room, excited to be there. Cheesy grins on their faces, probably, for being in a, a Power Five. And if they're asked their real opinion, how assertive can they be in the, you know, the second set of meetings after the ones in Vegas a couple of years ago? And then we don't know what the AAC teams are going to do. And that dictates right. everything because Bob Bowlesby was in the studio a couple months ago and it was like, well, typically in October we release the schedule. Well, it's June. We're four months out. We don't know if that's going to include those teams. We've heard perhaps they're close to the finish line. of de- It's a really weird, funny, awkward situation. Feels like a regular family. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll say this. The Big 12 has been knocked for being a dysfunctional family for a number of years because it's been on the verge of expiration for uh, more than once, right, in the last decade. So, I mean, at least they're still together. And and this is a point I want to make. The league has has been in uh, in better shape. I mean, you don't lose, you don't lose as Bob Bullsby said last week, you don't lose Oklahoma and Texas. I think he called them the two bell cows and, and not take a hit. Revenue-wise, uh, perception-wise, competition-wise, that it's going to sting. Uh, but but the league did respond about as well as it could have. And to that point, there was a lot of uh, there was even more talk than I expected, fellas, about not just BYU, but the three American schools being in place by the fall of '23. I, I think I think there's every expectation that this league will go to 14 teams. Uh, next year, not this coming year, but the one after that in time for 23, 24. So then it becomes a matter of watching about watching uh, what's going on in Norman and Austin with regard to, to OU's and, and Texas's exit strategy. But yeah, I mean, you're, you're look, not everyone's going to agree. This is a crazy time for college athletics in general with everything blowing up with NIL and the transfer portal and, and uh, you know, continued arguments about uh, amateurism and the wake of the Alston decision. Um, there's a lot of stuff in, on the wall right now and a lot of tough decisions to be made. Conferences are not going to be uniform in terms of how they react to these things. That goes for the Big 12. But but again, arriving back to the point, at least there is still a Big 12. And if, if they're not going to be as powerful and, and certainly not as rich as the SEC and the Big 10 moving forward with this membership, I think they've at least, again, solidified themselves and, and, and given themselves a shot to do some things moving forward, pending the new commissioner, pending the new media rights deal, and of course, pending the competitive value that the four newcomers bring into the league. And you bring up a great point in that when Texas and Oklahoma leave, you take a knock in several ways, right? You're playing for number three, and I think that'd be okay. As long as the Big 12 can sort of create this space where it's perceived competitively, financially, and so on, better than the ACC, the Pac-12 feels like it's kind of a little bit behind that, right, is... Number three would be a good spot here. Obviously, the SEC and the Big Ten are the top two and probably will be for the foreseeable future with those brands and those traditions and those TV contracts. But number three wouldn't be that bad. What's your opinion on that? It it wouldn't be right now. uh, And to Bullsby's point on Friday, when I asked specifically about the SEC and the Big Ten, the the gap isn't, the chasm isn't as, as big right now. But when you consider the new the new media rights contracts that are coming up, the Big Ten's gonna gonna reneg- is, is in the process, I assume, of renegotiating. They're gonna have theirs in, in the next year or two. The SEC already has a deal in place with ESP, and it's just gonna be off the charts uh, starting, I think, in, in 24. OU and Texas will only add to that in 25, assuming that's when they come aboard. And that then becomes the concern. It's it's not so much positioning yourself ahead of the ACC and the Pac-12. I think the Big 12 can do that even without Oklahoma and Texas, right? Um, and, and that's even with the Pac-12 holding on to USC and the ACC holding on to Clemson. The, the, the danger is getting lapped essentially by the SEC and the Big 10. Competitively, you... I mean, and this is two different things. Competitively, you can you can even keep up, I think, to a degree. Uh, with the SEC and the Big Ten. Certainly in, in sports outside of uh, football, that's happening right now. 
But if this is all about, and this becomes more important as college athletics gets more, you know, the, the, the lines blur in terms of amateurism and, and, and NIL money and revenue streams and media deals getting richer and richer, as the, con as the, uh, the revenue streams only increase into the SEC and the Big Ten, it's inherent on the other three leagues to, to not make this a power two, right? And that's, that's going to be the concern for whoever takes over for Bullsby in the commissionership and for the, the the presidents and chancellors and athletic directors at these schools, how are we going to keep this from being a power two where we're, we're it's essentially scraps that that are left over after the SEC and the Big Ten eat? You know, Garen, you mentioned all of the many decisions that still have to be made. You just touched on, you know, the fact that you know, you're going to need a new commissioner, uh, which you would think would probably be announced sooner rather than later. But I think we spent so much time on this show, and it's been fun to talk about what the divisions may look like. Well, now we don't even know if there are going to be divisions. Right. What came out in terms of that news over the weekend? And ultimately, where do you think this conference falls in terms of do you go divisions or do you not? Uh, a, I, nothing concrete with regard to divisions. Uh, I think there's there's a lot more attention on conferences like the SEC in terms of, of uh, format and scheduling models and things like that. Uh, I think that's I, I think that's something that's that's going to develop again when the league has a real firm idea of the three American schools in terms of their entrance. What, if, if if that gets closer and closer to 2023, then we get closer and closer to real talk about uh, a scheduling model in, in a 14-team league and then a 12-team league when when Oklahoma and Texas depart. I don't think they're going to have divisions, and I say that because that's it's not it's not just a trend everywhere else. PAC's already dropped it. The SEC is in the process of dropping it. But the Big 12 has lived comfortably with the idea of not having divisions since becoming a 10-team conference. It's worked out well, as was pointed out last week in Irving. Uh, they had they matched the two best teams of the conference. They don't worry about division champions in their in their title game in December. And it's what it's done is it's helped vault Oklahoma, uh, the Big 12 rep, into the college football playoff repeatedly. Why would you go away from that if there's uh, if the NCAA has relaxed the the guidelines and the uh, you know the the the, the divisional uh, format requirements with regard to staging a championship game and then uh, moving forward toward a college football playoff? So. I, no one's saying anything officially, but to read the tea leaves is to tell me that uh, whenever BYU and the three American schools uh, come aboard, we're, we're going to look at a divisionless Big 12. It's been, it's been done and worked out, uh, and now that the uh, the guide rails have been have been re removed by the NCAA, uh, there's no reason uh, this can't work out even with the bigger membership going forward. And frankly, that makes sense. And frankly, that was disappointing because we've been thinking about what those divisions could look like uh, as yeah, we get excited for BYU to be in the Big 12, but all good. Obviously, scheduling will need to be figured out and, and who's playing who and are there pods and whatnot. So um, I, I thought maybe we'd get a few of those answers, but I think without knowing the AAC team's timeline exactly, that's, that's kind of tough. I did want to ask you this, Garen. How quickly do you feel like BYU can get into the league and compete in the, uh, you know, top four perhaps at some point in football? In football, I don't think that. I I, I don't see why there'd be a wait. And if you're talking top, I I don't see why there'd be a wait right now to 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 play for a spot in Jerry World. And I say that because uh, oh, there's some uncertain. I mean, we're, we're talking just in, in the immediacy. There's some uncertainty at Oklahoma. I mean, if you're talking about competing in the league, you got to start with the Sooners because of their dominance of the conference last year, notwithstanding, right? But they're 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 going through transition with Lincoln Riley having taken the USC job and Brent Venables, who's never been a head coach before, coming in. I think Venables is going to be fine. He he knows Oklahoma well. Clearly, uh, he's going to repair some holes in the defense. I think that's also pretty clear given his track record, not just at OU back in the day, but at Clemson. But I don't think anyone knows exactly how this is going to work because we've not seen Venables be a head coach. We've not seen Jeff Levy be the uh, the Sooners offensive coordinator. We've not seen Dylan Gabriel throw a pass uh, for Oklahoma as good as he looked at times at, at, at UCF. Um, I mean, if, if you're entering a league that just had a football championship game featuring Oklahoma State and Baylor, and this is with OU and Texas still in the league, then there is no reason that BYU should should come and thinking this might take a little getting used to. No, I, I think they compete right away. Uh, top four at the least. I, I, I think the, the door is open for them to come in and, and have an impact almost immediately in terms of football. 
Dan, we're going to send you some BYU Sports Nation swag immediately yeah. with those uh, that last take. <laughs> yeah, uh, get, re- yeah. get ready to feel the love <laughs> of uh, BYU Sports Nation after that take. Uh, I think that's going to be music to a lot of fans' ears. Very yeah. cool. We I'll take a throw. Yeah, I'll take a McMahon. I'll take a McMahon throwback, a Bosco throwback. I like, like that. that. Yeah, <laughs> good good references. That's awesome. Well, Garen, we appreciate the time. Uh, people can check out your uh, your columns in the Tulsa World. And uh, thanks for uh, dropping some knowledge here. Absolutely. Good getting a chance to visit with you guys. Have a good week. Thank you. I'm sure we're going to talk to uh, Garen Emig more. He was fantastic. Uh, I really enjoyed that conversation. Yeah, great insight into what what happened over the weekend. And, uh, yeah, things are a little different than we thought they'd be, Jason, with this. Well, there's still – look, we we knew there was going to be some uncertainty, that there was going to take some time for some of these decisions to be made. But we we thought – we thought we'd have some of those answers already, but then, and we're, I'm probably mostly talking about the division side of yes, things. We thought yes. that would be determined by now. That was going to be very exciting. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen at all. I agree, and I agree the with NCAA you. saying you don't, yeah. you don't need, uh, you know, uh, you, each league can figure out how they determine its championship game uh, team. So good insight from Garen. We appreciate the time. Though. All right, coming up, Las Vegas really likes the BYU schedule this year. Utah State probably doesn't. We'll tell you the line they put on that game. And Bob Bowlesby says something that is music to BYU fans' ears. And it's even better than what Karen Emig just said. This is BYU Sports News. Hi, Spencer. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Gather the family for a midweek pick-me-up with an all-new lineup Wednesdays on BYU TV. Is that cool? Is that okay? You want inspiring? Yeah, we got that. Fun? Definitely. And surprising? Well, you'll just have to find out. Enjoy a marathon of good works to lift and inspire you for the rest of your week. See it all Wednesdays on BYU TV or anytime on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Here's Jason. I'm Jerem. Let's whip it. Good Whip Round is presented by Marist, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. I was listening to this podcast right before our show. David Locke, the play-by-play voice on radio of the Utah Jazz, said in his podcast today, Mark Pope may be a name to watch in filling the Utah Jazz coaching vacancy due to his relationship with uh, Ryan Smith. Now, prefacing this, He's not saying he's heard it. He's just saying Danny Ainge has a a tendency when he goes for these hires to think outside the box. And maybe because he knows Mark Pope, maybe maybe that's an outside of the box. He's not saying he's hearing that. But are you worried about losing Mark Pope uh, to the other team up north? No, Danny Ainge pulled Brad Stevens, who had been to two Final Fours. Um, You always got to win a game in the NCAA tournament first uh, to feel like that's even a possibility. The moment Mark Pope 
wins a game in the tourney or goes to a Sweet 16. It's going to happen at some point, we hope. Now he becomes a more desirable coach. He's a desirable coach for a lot of people because of his personality. He's had some real great success the first couple of years. But the moment BYU can quantify that in the NCAA tournament more, now I'd be a little more worried. If BYU had made the Sweet 16, I would feel differently about it. Yeah, no, I, Mark, Mark Pope's not going anywhere. Mark Pope is going to be the head coach of the BYU Cougars next year. Okay, Bob Bowlesby said the following in the Big 12 spring meetings, as quoted by Dr. Billy Nixon. <laughs> BYU, perhaps, with the exception of Notre Dame, they have the biggest worldwide reach of any university in the country and have been a traditional power in football. Ah, oh, we get a warm feeling hearing that. Did Bob Bowlesby automatically become a BYU Hall of Famer with this quote? Uh, look, he, if he didn't, he's certainly in consideration. This is what I was referencing yes. in trending. Yes. Like, comments like this, there's being nice, and then there's comments like this. That really, like, all right, he gets us. Bob, you a homie. Bob, you. Bob, Bob's a band of brother. And again, Bob. we've touched, if you're just joining the show, we've now said that anytime we mention Bob, it now, we don't need to say anything more. Double it's B? Bob Bowlesby, it's Bob. So I love this. Bobby B? Transformer? No. No? No, okay. just Bob. Okay. All right. Robert? No, just Bob. All right. What jumps out to you from the soccer and women's volleyball schedules for next season? Uh, at Ohio State, fun. Colorado, Utah, Alabama, Santa Clara at home. Awesome. Volleyball. Five teams, as you mentioned, that finished in the top 25. Pitt and Provo, they went to the final four. At Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech was in the Elite Eight. Of course, you get Ohio State and Utah and Wazoo at home. And Utah State, for the first time in a long time, Rob Nielsen's up there, former BYU player, men's assistant coach, interim coach for a while. Heather's alma mater, Utah State, got good. They're back <laughs> on the schedule. Look, here's what I have always loved about Jennifer Rockwood, Heather Olmstead. They are not afraid to play teams. They'll go places to play. They can get teams to come here. The thing that stands out to me about both, and certainly the, the women's soccer schedule, is the amount of high-profile teams that coming to Provo. Yes. It is amazing. But when you look at both schedules, it is the number of high-profile teams that BYU is facing. That is phenomenal. And what? something neither program has ever shied away from. Think about women's soccer, just brands. Yes. Like North Carolina Exhibition game, Ohio State, And Alabama. these are return trips because Ohio State was here last year. Yes. You called that game. I did call that Early, game. Early uh, in August. That's right. Game. There was a Cougar sighting this weekend at the mouth of Provo Canyon. <laughs> Some high-level uh, recruits posted photos with it during official visits. If you ran into this in the wild, would you stop to take the photo or would you be fearful it was real? Okay, do I know it's real or fake? Do I know ahead of time? No. Okay, then no, I'm not going near it. You're not going Because near. it's fake, but the fact that it could be real, there is no chance. <laughs> Look, we've seen there's been a video out there. I, I am not the most, uh, the yeah. fleet of foot. Yeah. I, I don't want to test myself You're more of against a power the guy, not a speed guy. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not messing with that. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm not messing with that either. Which reminds me, Friday I'm golfing at Hobel Creek. Shout out to Ben Bagley, our producer. He, he played there as well. And uh, I roll up to my cart. There's a snake, and it's like six feet away. Stuff snake? Nope. This is a real snake. Not a rattlesnake. I don't know what kind of snake it was. Curled up, probably. I don't know. Six, eight feet long. That scared the crap out of me, man. Are you a snake reptile guy at all? No. I find them not, disgusting. On my I mission I want to, in I Brazil, want to touch in them. Sao Paulo, we went to the, the Anti-Venom Museum in Sao Paulo. I saw the biggest snakes I'll ever oh. see in my life. I thought you were talking about Tom Hardy. Venom. Nice. Okay. I need to finish this. I have to explain one. it. Yeah. The joke is yeah. lost. It's fine. It wasn't a joke. <laughs> Real. Okay. All right, coming up, rise and shout out to a BYU great. And South Point put out, puts out lines for six BYU games this year. Who is BYU a 20-point favorite over that I completely disagree with? This is BYU Sports Nation. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Sam Ree. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift card, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today.
things happen to us sometimes. But I have to believe that something good is gonna come out of this. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us Friday for the Reviewables 2001. That was a good year. Spencer and Jerem relive and break down the best of a 12-2 season that goes down as one of the best years in BYU football history. It's Friday at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Please don't cut off this play. Let them score. Luke Staley down the sideline. Oh, I was in the yeah. press box trying not to lose it. <laughs> because that place I was, was going nuts. Quick story. So I, I go down to this. So I listen, I want to go to the BYU football game, and I don't care if no one else is coming with me. I go down on a bus by myself. I'm like a junior in high school or something. Like taking don't UTA? I have a like taking UTA down yeah. there? And I don't have a ticket. And I'm on the corner of Lavelle Edwards Stadium on the southwest side. He's like, don't you know who I will to, be? I'm trying to get a ticket. I brought like 50 bucks. I'm like, I'm getting in. At the time, that was like, you know, 100 now with inflation, 5% every year or whatever. Anyway, I don't get this ticket. Someone sells a ticket for like 20 bucks. I was like, oh, crap. And I was like, oh, man. And I'm wearing my 98 Kevin Federick Motor City Bowl. The jersey. one that you have brought yes, to the show. Brought, the, brought on. I'm getting in this game. I'm, I'm looking like a weirdo with a Federick jersey. He's just graduated three years before. And I'm like, oh, man. This dude and his friends were right by me, and they go, hey, do you not have a ticket to the game? They said, no. And they said, are you by yourself? And I go, uh, Yeah. And he goes, just come with us. Here. He's like, just come with us. My and name's was Kevin like, Federick. <laughs> no. <laughs> My name's Robbie Bosco. No, just kidding. Did I say six row? It was 11th row. And nice. those guys were super nice and cool and chill and everything and enjoyed that play. It was great. That. Thanks. Shout out to the. I don't even know their names. I have no clue. That play, yeah. the Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Replay. Was rocking. It was I think, shaking I think with that play. I think that's the loudest I've ever heard it. Um, I, I, I'm not from sure. From going that, to games 96 to Yeah, now. I'm not sure I would disagree with you. That yeah. place went berserk so on fun. that play. It was awesome. Kept the season alive, down 11, six minutes left. That's why I mixed those numbers, probably, because that's them. Okay, uh, welcome back. Are we on? We're on? Okay, oh, this is cool. on? Oh, we're on? This, okay. is, this is the thing? Okay, uh, let's talk about some South Point college football games of the year. Uh, the casino in, uh, in the desert uh, put out some lines. South Las Vegas. <laughs> That's why they call that. Let's talk about some of these and what you think of these lines. Let's, okay. Let's discuss. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they said Baylor. It was BYU by eight when it came out. It is now four and a half. Your thoughts? Well, wasn't it a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, like two and a half? Yeah. It was so so it's, moved, it's moved more. Moving a lot. So uh, I, I, I like. It's a different book oh, on the two. Different book. Okay. But still, it gives you a sense of sort of what. No, I, I, no. I, think this is, I think this is pretty accurate. I thought the two and a half was fairly accurate because, look. It, you are by a score. Yes, because these two teams, I think, are, are very evenly matched. And it's going to be a tight one. Yeah. And I, you give, I think you give the advantage to BYU because you're at home. Because at home. Okay, at Oregon. At Oregon, I know. Uh, Ducks by four. I think that's probably accurate. And I'll take that. More than if a field the, goal. If you're within a, within a touchdown. That means you got a shot. That's exact. I'll yeah. take that every day. Okay, here's the one I disagree with. Utah State started at BYU by 24. Now it's 20. Yes, I believe BYU can certainly win by 20 plus against Utah State at home. Mm -hmm. But Utah State last year was tremendous. They returned the quarterback. It's second year. Uh, you know, if Anderson is head coach. Like, like Utah State, I think, is is not a three-score kind of dog at home like they're better than that they won 11 games finish ap top 25 i know they lose like half the half the starters that feels like a big line to me uh i would agree it seems like a big line i i would it's certainly possible that it ends up that way yeah because byu's at home we know the talent that's coming back for this team but I, I think initially I probably would have thought anywhere between like 10 and 15 points is probably where I yes. thought it would would I, land. I agree. It's in that spot. Okay, Notre Dame by five. Look, that, That's a little tighter than I thought. Look, it was. and, and I'll, I'll use the exact same example that I did with the game at Oregon. If you're going to have a game against Notre Dame, and, I, and that's going to be the highest ranked team you face, and I think that will play out throughout the year, then if you're within a touchdown and have yourself an opportunity, I will take that every time. You're telling me. The worst line is by five to Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah. Like Vegas loves them some Brigham yeah. Young. University I will take Cougars, that okay? always. What what was the Lavelle quote? Uh, Mormons take a hundred dollars to Vegas, 
and the word of wisdom and don't break either. And, oh, and, yeah. The, and the yeah, Ten the, Commandments yeah, and they break neither one. That's a great line. Something like that. He's we great. butchered it, but that's okay. Okay, Arkansas. Or Kansas, depending <laughs> on how you want to say it. Uh, BYU by five at home. This is this is a big game for BYU against the second SEC team ever to come to Provo. Yeah, and the fact that it's an SEC team and BYU's favored, I like that. I think it's, again, I, I don't have too many issues with it being – you know, you're getting points. It's a good team in Arkansas. We know that they're a really good team. They're good. It's just a matter of whether they're very good. Right. Well, and, and you're going to get an, an opportunity or an advantage from the from the books to be at home. Yes. And so they, they're calling it a close game. I would it's, expect it to be a close game, and I think BYU pulls it out. So I said I agree. by five. Sorry, it's now three. It's now three, correct. So it's field goal. BYU's yeah. favored by a field goal. That's, that's essentially a pick em, right? And then Boise State is a pick em. which is good news for BYU. Listen, the only time BYU has won in Boise – is when it had the future number two pick in the draft, and the next Wait, year a fifth round pick. Where's Hank Bachmeyer? Running What's his status? Hank Bachmeyer is the the second coming of Cameron Rising, apparently, <laughs> uh, who plays all positions and influences all games in all times and all and in all things and in all places. Okay, um, yeah, that that's an interesting game to me. I, honestly, I would have assumed BYU would be like a like a. Two and a half point dog. dog. Yeah, that's what I would expect. Yes. Two so, and a half points feels. Perfect. So you're going on yes. the road at Boise, which you know BYU historically has not fared very well. Now what? they've obviously had success recently. Yes, but and now but, you bring a team yes. that is like BYU is absolutely better than Boise State. But I think because of this, they look at last year's game yep. and BYU was turnover prone in that game, and that that was the one that got away. Right? UAB is different. There's attrition. Attrition. BYU's. At the peak of the season, by the way, when they lose to Boise State. Do you yep. remember what BYU was ranked? It was 10th. Yep. It was 10th. But I, I, he was going to crack the top 10 if they beat the stinking Broncos and they decide they're going to fumble it thrice. I think what you set this up with in terms of, you know, talking about how Vegas loves BYU, mm-hmm. all of these lines are perfect examples of how highly BYU is thought of yes. in Las Vegas. BYU is good, man. It's This is like, I think this is the most preseason hype we've We've given any BYU team an independence, any team. They are ready for the Big 12. Unfortunately, we're going to see, uh, you know, a talent, um, uh, you know, dispersal after this season because BYU is going to have a great year. There's going to be a ton of draft picks. It's going to be awesome. You hope to recruit well. You hope to get into the Big 12 and, uh, like we are talking about earlier, compete right away. But ultimately, all these games matter less than the game that happens in how many days? Countdown to the Bulls. 89 days. Okay, sub 90. Let's go. We're under 90, folks. What is it, Caden Moore Day? Let's go. All right, coming up, what was your biggest story from the weekend? There are two things Mormon won't break, the Sabbath and a $20 bill. Greg Short weighing in. Okay. And rise and shout out to one of the greats from Brigham. This is BYU Sports Nation. (sighs) Okay, man, you got this. It's not that bad. Okay, it's a little bad. Just do it. Woo! That was unbelievable. Some things seem scarier than they really are, like buying a home. But your loan officer at Intercap Lending will help you get pre-approved and walk you through every step of the process. Intercap Lending, a name you can trust since 1978. I'm okay. I'm okay. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Mark. Some of my favorite moments are hearing from the family room, just a chorus of laughter. Twas your mother's. BYU TV has been an escape and, and a refuge for me. We forgot about random acts. We love that one. Today, we wanted to do something nice for you. I see that change on him after that show. It just brightened everybody's day. I can do this. I want to live my life in a way that that show showed me. Follow the ups and downs of elite young gymnasts in an exclusive behind-the-scenes look as they twist, flip, and bounce their way to the podium. 
see the commitment, effort, and mindset it takes for these competitors to rule their sport on Gym Stars, on BYU TV, or on the free app. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Yo, you can download our apps. They're free, always available on demand. This show and other games. Download the podcast as well. Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review. Our question of the day. What was the biggest BYU news that came out over the weekend? I'm not sure we've seen this kind of overwhelming response in a long it's unanimous. time. It's unanimous. Uh, all those in favor, please make it manifest. We thank, well, I'd like to thank you with an arm raise. That's always a fun thing. Jonathan Hawkinson on Twitter. The biggest news over the weekend was Shaylee Gonzalez announcing she's transferring. She was going to be the main leader, star of the women's basketball team next year. So losing her makes the upcoming season seem like a complete rebuilding year. I don't think it's complete because there's some good young uh, talent there, but we'll see. In response uh, to that, our elite voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, Ben Peterson on Twitter. Shaylee's leaving. She was poised to have an awesome senior year. It'd be the first of two senior years, by the way. Hopefully, hopefully get BYU WCC title on the way out. Going to be extremely difficult to replace her production. Can BYU bring in a player of her caliber from the transfer portal or from high school? It will be a challenge. Yeah, look, look, and I'm still holding out hope that maybe she changes her mind. Perhaps. The, the social media post did not feel... Like, it's something she was going to change her mind, but you never know in these situations. We thought Yoli Childs was gone. Yeah. He came back uh, a couple of years ago. So today's Rise and Shout Out, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We give it to Shaylee Gonzalez. Now, if this is Shaylee's last hurrah with BYU, and it certainly feels that way, it was a fun ride, man. Four years behind the back dribbles, layups. Her she was social, amazing. Her social media influence, her personality, she was fantastic. BYU won a ton of games. Last year was so fun as it was the greatest regular season team in BYU history. We're going to miss her, man. Yeah, there's no question about it. She was phenomenal. Truly will go down as one of the greats to ever play at BYU, without yeah, question. The versatility, too. It wasn't like she was just pure scorer, pure yep. passer. She was both. She could rebound. And Six. so clutch. Very so clutch. clutch. A couple Sports Center top 10 plays, uh, you know, and whatnot. So we'll miss you, Shaley. Best of luck with everything. Hopefully, you'll come back. Our thanks to today's guest, Garen Emig. Conversation continues 24 7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always use hashtag BYUSN. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time. Even, even on June 6th, we still have tough to talk, uh, stuff to talk about. For Jason, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Jonathan Tavernari. We'll see you tomorrow for more BYUSN. Go Cougs!